Hey everyone, this is Nathan Oxenfeld with Integral Eyesight Improvement in Asheville, North Carolina. I spoke with a woman earlier this week who's been watching the Bates Method 101 videos and trying the practices. She visited her eye doctor and asked if she can improve her vision by doing the yogic eye movements. Her eye doctor responded by saying that she cannot improve her vision and that the yogic eye movements will simply strengthen the muscles of the eyes. Her eye doctor was partially correct in saying that the yogic eye movements do strengthen the muscles of the eyes, but incorrect in saying that she can't improve her vision, because she can. She was a little confused by that experience though, so I wanted to clear something up today. The yogic eye movements are not a part of the Bates Method. As I mentioned in the video about the eye movements, they're a practice of yoga. The purpose of the eye movements is to strengthen the muscles around the eyes, tone them, make them more flexible and responsive, and to increase circulation to the eyes. But they don't necessarily relax the muscles of the eyes or lead to better vision. All the practices in the Bates Method are designed to relax and loosen the muscles of the eyes in order to achieve better vision. Because the vision, perfect vision can only happen when the muscles and the eyes and the mind are all relaxed. So, why did I film a video teaching the yogic eye movements if it doesn't necessarily lead to improved vision? Well, simply for the fact that in my experience in improving my own vision, I did both. I practiced the yogic eye movements in conjunction with the Bates Method. So, I'm not saying to not do the eye movements, I'm saying to do the eye movements and the Bates Method, and to really understand that they're two separate practices. So today what I want to teach you is a new practice from the Bates Method called nose drawing that is sort of like the Bates Method equivalent of the yogic eye movements. And in nose draw, in the yogic eye movements, you're really only using the voluntary part of the muscles of the eyes. You're consciously moving your eyes in different directions consciously. In nose drawing, we're going to let the eyes move unconsciously or involuntarily. So in nose drawing, you're going to pretend like you've got a pen or a pencil or a paintbrush or a laser pointer, anything you want on the tip of your nose, and you're going to be drawing pictures with that. So just like in the yogic eye movements, we're going to start with horizontal movement. So you're going to pretend like you're drawing a horizontal line with your nose. You can already see my eyes are moving involuntarily. I'm not thinking about them at all, but they're shifting on their own, which is very relaxing to the eyes and the mind. You can draw vertical lines up and down. You can do diagonal lines. Just keep your eyes totally soft. Don't think about them at all. Just let them move freely. You can go do any shapes you want, circles, squares, infinity signs, and you can do the nose drawing with your eyes open and with your eyes closed. So when your eyes are closed, you can either pretend like there's a piece of paper in front of you or that you're drawing on a billboard far away or on the wall, the ceiling, or just in space. But when your eyes are closed, you're going to really picture that you're seeing that drawing appear. So you see the horizontal line, you see the vertical line, you see you're imagining or visualizing the infinity sign perfectly clearly. And you can find you can ask yourself where where do I see that? Where in space am I drawing it? And that'll help access your imagination, your visualization and your memory, which will all enhance your vision as well. And you can this has a very immediate feedback with the eyes open. You can look at the screen and you can draw an imaginary horizontal line from side to side or top to bottom or draw my face or the pattern on here. Or you can look at a picture on your wall and draw around it and you can see that it immediately improves the vision. The movement of the head, the relaxation of all the muscles, it sharpens up the vision. And to explain how this works, with the eye movements, you're really only using this part of the muscle. The striated portion of the muscle is the voluntary part. It can be consciously controlled. The involuntary part, which is accessed through the, no the nose drawing, is the smooth muscle tissue where the eye muscle connects to the sclera, or the white part of the, the eye. So the eye movements address this part, 
which can help strengthen those muscles, but these, this part of the muscle doesn't really deal with the quality of the vision. The smooth muscle tissue is the part of the muscle that changes the shape of the eye to allow for better focusing. So moving the head when you look at things helps calm down this part of the muscle, relax it, which spreads to the voluntary part, which spreads to the optic nerve, which spreads to the brain, which actually calms down the entire nervous system. So at first the nose drawing just starts as a way to calm down and relax the eyes, but very quickly it starts to relax the entire body, which is really, really neat. And looking into that a little bit further, you, when you look at the spine, you've got all your vertebrae that have nerves that associate with different parts of the body. And if you look at the very first two vertebrae, the atlas and the axis, cervical one and cervical two, the first two parts of the body that are associated with C2 are the eyes and the optic nerves. Now, these, two, these top two vertebrae are way up here, almost at the base of the skull. And if there's tightness or tension or an issue in those top vertebrae, it's not like if you have a pain in your shoulders or your back where you can physically massage and release that strain or tension. This is a little more tricky to access, so actually the most efficient way to access that part is through tiny little oscillations of the head, i.e. nose drawing. So while you're drawing, while you're pivoting your head, you're actually addressing and releasing any strain or tension that's been built up or held up in the top of the spine. And this is right near the limbic system, which dictates your stress response. So by moving the head, pivoting the head, you can actually successfully switch your, your stress response from the fight or flight mode into the rest and relaxation mode. That will lead ultimately to more relaxed body, mind, eyes, and clearer vision. So overall, nose drawing is teaching you a new habit. It's a new habit of seeing, a new way to use your eyes. Instead of looking with your eyes, you're learning to look with your nose. So you're pointing your head at what you want to look at. And you can even become more of an artist and sort of draw the world out in front of you and move your head and really look around not consciously with your eyes, you're involuntarily letting your eyes just scan the environment and move as they want to. So this is a really important habit to start doing to really loosen and relax the muscles of the eyes, which in turn will allow them to function properly and allow the eyes to focus on their own. So nose drawing, I like to say, is like a good way to switch your eyes back into autofocus mode instead of manual focus mode. Since I'm also a photographer, I like to use those types of analogies as well. So, not only are you relaxing the whole body, and especially the top of the, the cervical vertebra, but you also get to have fun drawing silly pictures while you're doing it too. So, I hope that cleared up the difference between the yogic eye movements and the, and the Bates method including the nose drawing. So the difference there is the voluntary muscles and the involuntary muscles. And they're both beneficial, but they're just different. So I just want to make sure that you understand that. So please let me know if you have any other questions or need anything else cleared up about the Bates Method. And thank you so much for watching, and happy nose drawing.